What's going on smart people? This video is probably going to be the most helpful for those of you who are just starting out with your physics degree. Because if you're just starting out, that means you're doing your Newton's laws, you're doing all of this old physics, this stuff that people have figured out a long time ago. You have no idea what people are actually solving now, but this is where all your parents, your family, your friends are asking, what do you want to do with your physics degree? And you kind of have to pull something out of your ass and you say what everyone else says. You say, I want to do something with, and then you just insert some physics buzz word that you heard on Cosmos. So I have two goals for today. One is to convince you that it's okay to tell people that you have no idea what you want to do once you get your physics degree. And two, I want to show you how to find out what people are actually researching in physics. That way, as you go through your physics degree and you get a little bit more experience, you can look back and see what starts to become a little bit more appealing. As for why it's okay to tell people that you don't know what you want to do with physics, let's find some pop science buzzword to pick on. Let's just talk about string theory or something. So you watch the Michio Kaku video and now you say, don't get me wrong, he's, he's great at presenting this stuff, so I can see why people would watch his videos who already have an interest in physics and say, well, maybe that's what I want to do. I understand that, and it's honest. But I'm not going to pretend to be the person that doesn't see how people react when you use those kinds of buzzwords, especially to people who are outside of STEM. So say you're talking to your political science philosophy double major friend, and you throw the, yeah, I think I want to do something with string theory. It's Again, I'm not going to pretend to, to not know that people react a certain way to that. It's almost like, oh, wow, you must be very... Sp it's that kind of reaction. So hold on to that. And then you go to talking to an actual professional physicist, and you throw that same thing their way. They're going to roll their eyes at you. They at least won't take you very seriously, and here's why. And it, and it's not, it's not to be rude, and it's not to be judgmental, but you're kind of faced with a couple of options if someone brings that to you. Either you know what they're doing, you know that they just kind of got used to impressing people by throwing out these physics buzzwords, or they've convinced themselves that they know enough about the field to say that's what I'm going to do or that's what I think I'm going to do, knowing that you haven't really even scraped the surface of what that theory actually is. Since we're already picking on string theory, you know, I, I at least have my bachelor's degree in physics and I have my research internship in theoretical nuclear physics. I I don't understand string theory. It is it's it's still way too advanced for me. I it's now that doesn't say other people can't understand it. That's not what I'm insinuating, but it just has so many prerequisites to even be able to scratch the surface and to hear what the secondhand consequences of it sort of are and then say that's what I want to do. You know, it's it's almost um it's almost disrespectful to the field in a sense. Now, having maybe sounded quite a bit condescending there, and I really didn't mean to, it's also completely reasonable to say something like, I don't know what I want to do, but having watched people like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michio Kaku, it's hard not to think their fields seem interesting. That's honest. That's completely realistic. And I think people would be like, yeah, you know what? They do have a way with words and a way with explaining things. And they might be more willing to help guide you to find different fields and explore this stuff for yourself. And this actually segues into the second part of this video, which is finding out what research physicists actually do and what fields there are to pursue professionally. And I think a great way to do this is to just explore maybe the research groups at your local universities. So if you just got accepted to some university, a great way to start is to go through the research groups at that university. I went to Old Dominion, so for an example, I'll go through how to find out what research is being offered or being conducted at Old Dominion University. So just on Google, you go over, I'm going to type in ODU Physics Research. And the first thing that pops up, Department of Physics Research. We click on it, and then what it's going to do is it's going to give us a whole bunch of categories of physics, a whole bunch of categories of specialties that people are specializing in. And it's not supposed to be a secret, right? So it's going to be clear cut. This is this field. This is who's studying this field. This is who's researching this field. So we see nuclear and particle physics, AMO, accelerator science, condensed matter. One thing to keep in mind is the fields that are listed are never going to be all of the fields of physics, right? Because the fields that are listed are going to be uh, the fields that they actually have faculty doing research in. So for example, I don't think ODU has a solid state uh, physics person. I could be wrong on that though. So let's say, let's say you have absolutely no idea what physics sounds the most exciting. Maybe a good question to ask yourself first is, do you want to be the person or do you think you might want to be the person that makes the measurement, the person that finds the particle, or do you want to be the person that predicted its existence? So maybe that's just an example. 
Um, so that could give you an idea of do you want to do experimental physics or theoretical physics. This is just to start putting thoughts in your head. So let's say right off the bat you think experimental sounds cooler. You should go through all of these, but just as a jumping off point, let's go to experimental nuclear and particle physics. This is where they'll tell you maybe re where the research is being conducted and the faculty that is conducting said research. Now, what's going to hold the most information for you is by clicking on the faculty members because each person is going to have their sales pitch for the field. So if we click on anyone here, they're going to tell you what, the or what experimental nuclear slash particle physics is. So we click on one person, um, they're going to tell you, it's going to, it's, this is just going to be their website, so they might tell you like what they're teaching, but if we go down to research, which everyone will have, uh, because that's the only way really to get a, a faculty position um, for physics at a university, is you have to kind of be doing your own research, more than likely. So click on I smash atoms. This is going to be the thing that is broadcasted to the general public. This is why my stuff matters. It's going to be more or less at a surface level. You know, my research consists of studying how nucleons, protons and neutrons, interact to form nuclei. I do this like a five-year-old, I hit it and see what comes out, and all this stuff. Um, so this is, you know, you read this from a whole bunch of different faculty members, you start to develop a picture of what the field is, and that's how you start to be like, maybe once internship season comes along, I'll apply for those types of research internships, because at least at this level, that's what sounds interesting to me. And then, not to mention, like, if you're at the university, no one loves talking about research more than the professor who's doing the research. So probe their minds a little bit. What do you do? You know, they love that stuff. And then, um, once you're feeling up for it, maybe you've been a physics major for a couple years now, and you're, maybe you had your first internship, and you can appreciate knowing exactly what they're doing, not the, here's how I'm trying to sell you my product, uh, you can go down and try to find where their publications are, what papers are they writing. So you have the, I, I probed the inner workings of the universe by studying atomic processes. You know, you have, you have that grandiose explanation that sort of romanticizes the field. And then you have virtual Compton scattering and neutral pion electroproduction in the resonance region up to the deep and elastic region at backwards angles. So there, there becomes a, a pivotal point in being the physics major to where you can appreciate that much more, right? Because it seems like, it doesn't seem like someone's trying to sell you something anymore. It's, it's, I want you to genuinely know what it is that I do specifically. So for those of you who are interested in seeing what areas of physics are actively being researched, I hope this helps paint a better picture of how to find those fields. Also, I understand that some people do put quite a bit of thought into what they want to do with a physics degree before going in. So that thing in the beginning might not apply to you, and I recognize that that doesn't just apply to everybody. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment section if you did, and I'll see you guys there.